Welcome to this quick lecture on how to avoid eyelid ptosis when doing uh, botulinum toxin injections. Um, it's a really common problem and actually I'm really convinced you just need to know have a little bit of knowledge and it will change your injection technique and the rate of eyelid ptosis will drop through the floor because using this knowledge um, we have an injection technique that drops the rate from what the published data says which is 1 in 100 to what in my experience is less than 1 in about 15,000. So uh, really no need to have to deal with people with droopy eyelids um, and it all comes from understanding the anatomy and it's really not that difficult when you know. So this is going to help you understand it and explain it to your clients better and explain why you are going to be a much safer than an average injector just by knowing this information. Um, it's probably one of the most unpleasant side effects because it's where people look the whole time and you're constantly asked what's wrong with you. It feels like an injury, it makes clients very unhappy um, and it's possibly treatable but not it's not really something that gets that much better with the eyelid drops that you can use um, it just makes it livable so um, really important thing to avoid and this lecture is all about how to avoid it so the first thing is uh, which muscle is affected and it's the levator pulpary muscle of the eyelid and this is the picture that most people look at when they learn about the anatomy so the two-dimensional picture looking straight from above uh, from in front um, and although that's useful, what it does, I think unconsciously, is gives people the impression that the closer you get to the actual eyelid, the more danger it is of getting an eyelid ptosis. And when you see the side view, which I'm going to show you next, you'll understand why that's not necessarily the case. So this is the crucial picture to understand. Um, and if we have a look at where this muscle runs, this is the, uh, if I just get my pen here, so this is where the the muscle that we're worried about is actually running so it's running into the orbit and is attached at the back of the orbit back of the eye socket um, I think what people are thinking is that this muscle here is the one that's going to be affected so this is actually orbicularis oculi muscle and if you're injecting um, people feel like the closer they get lower down here the more likely they're going to get a droopy eyelid which kind of makes intuitive sense until you realize that the muscle that we're actually worried about is actually within the orbit. So how is botulinum toxin getting into this space? That's the question we need to ask ourselves to make sure that you are a safer injector. And of course it's all about depth of injection and not the proximity to the eyelid as you might all assume. And this is a space we worry about. So if you put a, an injection in um, straight through the, the orbicularis oculi muscle and you know possibly quite close to the bone here, there's a potential space where the botulinum toxin can trickle down and then get into this space here and affect the muscle that lifts the eyelid. In actual fact, the one that we all worry about, orbicularis oculi here, if anything, probably forms a barrier to getting an eyelid ptosis. <coughs> so that's quite a thought isn't it when we're all we're worried so much about getting to the how close we are to the actual eyelid that if you're superficial and above the orbicularis oculi muscle you've actually got a barrier to an eyelid ptosis there rather than getting more and more risky um, it's actually going to be quite helpful if you can place your product here or at worst in the actual muscle but not underneath the muscle so that is your key fact which will change your injection technique um, of course um, I must just also uh, think about what's actually happening. This this injection is normally happening when people are having their frown lines treated. So we're trying to treat the corrugator muscle, which starts starts deep and on the bone. If I go back to this picture, um, the corrugator muscle runs from here to here. And it starts deep and attached to the bone and gets gradually more superficial until around about the mid pupillary line is actually uh, above the frontalis muscle, above orbicularis oculi, and it's embedded in the skin. And that's how our injections should work as well, that we start deep where it's safe and we've actually got quite a distance from the levator muscle. Um, we get medium depth around here and when we're at the most risky point we make sure that we're above orbicularis oculi and within the dermis of the skin where the insertion point of the corrugator is. And that will make sure that we're not able to get product trickling down um, into the space and cause it causing an ilotosis. So um, that's your cru crucial anatomy. Um, if you'd like to see the injection technique, I cover it on my e-learning course, which you can find at elearning.drtimpierce.co.uk. Um, but of course, like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And uh, uh, or if I'm also going to put it on other channels as well. It should also be on Vimeo. Um, so uh, just keep in touch with us and get your free updates. And if you're interested in doing the longer courses, uh, just go to elearning.drtimpierce.co.uk or I'll post a link as well. Hope that was really helpful and it should make you a safer injector from today. Music